All right, guys, so in this video, we're gonna continue our idea of PGFs. Again, we're still not looking at exactly why we want them. We're just still trying to get comfortable with the idea. Okay, so this will be very, very similar to many of the ones that we've already done. Okay, this time again, we're working with the geometric progression. This time though, we are going to, uh, probability between zero and one, of course. Um, we're gonna allow x to be everything from one, two, three, all the way up. This is our normal geometric progression, right, where we're gonna keep doing it over and over and over again until we finally find a success. Note that we have our normal geometric probability here. The probability is equal to p times one minus p to the x minus one. And of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the PGF of this specific scenario all right so let's go straight into it all right so just as we normally do we're going to go ahead and start with gt equals the probability sorry the uh, sum from x equals one to infinity probability of x equals x to the t to the x just like always um, you'll notice that these are all going to be very very similar in the processes and in how we do this we're almost always going to start with the definition of the pgf and then once we have that then we can go ahead and take the probability which we know or which we've probably found in a previous step and we can go ahead and put that in so what we now have is that it's the summation from x equals one to infinity and for the probability there we're going to have p times one minus p to the x minus one, and then t to the x power. Now, the p, of course, is a constant. So this p, we're gonna go ahead and pull out. We can't do this one minus p because that one minus p is to the x minus one power and the x is a variable, all right? One thing I am gonna notice, though, is that I've got an x here and an x minus one here. Now, thinking about the last question that we did in the last video, if I can get those two the same, then I can pull out the variable uh, that's the exponent and I can turn it into some type type of geometric sequence rather than just what I have here Okay, so that's exactly actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna multiply it by 1 minus P over 1 minus P Okay, now the one on the bottom is a constant so that can pull out as well All right, so what this is gonna look like when I put it all together is that the G of T now is still equal to the summation, but it'll be the summation from x equals one to infinity of, I brought this p out, this p came out, this one minus p is on the bottom and it came out, oh, sorry, that should be uh, out on the uh, outside there. So I've got a p out here, I've got a one minus p out here, all right? Now, otherwise, this one minus p is gonna be joined in with this, making it 1 minus p to the x and t to the x. And of course, at this point, we can rewrite it. I'll rewrite it a little bit clearer this time. Summation from x equals 1 to infinity of, and this time it's all together, so it'll be t times 1 minus p all to the x power. Now, you'll notice that this is now going to be a geometric series where u1 equals t times 1 minus p because if I put in x equals one, that makes my first term t times one minus p, then every single time r is also gonna be t times one minus p. All right, so using my formula, which I know that the infinite sum of a geometric sequence is u one over one minus r, we'll go ahead and put all this in so that we now have that my gt, my pgf, is equal to p over one minus p, but now this whole summation here, right, is gonna be equal to u1, which is t times one minus p, all over one minus t times one minus p, because that's my r there. Okay, now at this point, I should be able to go through and do a little bit of crossing out here. I got a one minus p and one minus p there. Okay, let's see what it looks like when I put all those things together now. So I've got a P and a T on the top. Well, that's convenient. That's what I was looking for. And then on the bottom, I've got one minus T times one minus P. Oh, well, what do you know? That's what I was looking for here as well. Okay, now of course that only works, and this is almost there, 
Okay, I found that that's the DT almost there because that only works if R, right? R has to be less than one. Well, the absolute value of R has to be less than one. Okay, so that means that the absolute value of T times one minus P has to be less than one. Okay, now of course one minus P we know is positive, so I can divide both sides by that. And then what I'm left with is the absolute value of T needs to be less than one over one minus P. Now, therefore this, when we did that summation to infinity, that only works when the R is less than one, or in other words, when T is less than one over one minus P. And so therefore this is a correct PGF, as long as the t is less than the absolute value of t, the modulus of t is less than 1 over 1 minus p. All right, so that's that one.